and welcome to the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast, bringing personal finance to you step by step. This is episode 15. Thank you for downloading this episode. Please do check out the website at sspf.co.uk for more Simple Steps Personal Finance content. Last episode, we looked at the practicalities of paying off debt. January is usually the time where the creaks in your personal finance can show up. The end of the year is expensive, salaries are stretched over the beginning of the year, New Year resolutions often centre around improving money behaviours. Well, it's the perfect storm, I suppose. For many, the debt is the symptom of a financial approach that isn't adaptive. Each month is treated the same, and well, they're not. So when a pinch point occurs, The result is a need to use easy debt methods, like overdrafts, credit cards, even personal loans. Then there are people who have finances which are already extremely stressed. There was no fat on that bone anyway. No expensive lifestyle, no luxuries, already reduced bills as much as possible. And then when the added spending at the end of the year occurs, it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. The result? A loss of control and a need for external advice on how to rectify the problem. Now, both groups here are suffering from an imperfect approach to their finances. The symptom is the same. The symptom is debt. The cause is either not planning the finances each month with a view to what is coming up. That's the first example's issue. But the more serious problem of not having enough money to service the debts and still maintain the essential aspects of life, like paying the mortgage, having enough left to eat and keep the lights on. That's the second group. Now, right now, I would say that if you are part of the second group, that you can't make the minimum payments on your debts, that there isn't enough money to cover all bases each month, then there are specialist debt counsellors who will help you. There are charities who you can turn to. Citizens Advice, National Deadline, Step Change. These will sit down with you, get the lay of the land and come up with a plan for you. They'll work out the totals you owe, who you owe it to, and then look to take action with you. That may mean speaking with a lender and freezing your interest, stopping the debt from climbing even higher. They may negotiate repayment plans that you can afford to service, looking at your monthly expenses and then seeing where the leftover can be best applied. It's important to remember, if you are in this position, there's no debt situation that cannot be solved. It may take a long time and require significant sacrifice from you, but it is fixable, I assure you. If you're struggling emotionally and mentally as a result of being in debt, and unfortunately, persistent debt problems and mental health issues do tend to be strongly linked, then there is a fourth charity who could help you. Sleep problems, anxiety and depression, a loss of appetite, a feeling of helplessness. The charity, Christians Against Poverty, will not only work on relieving your debt pressures, like the other charities, but they will also look to counsel you emotionally and help you on on the human side of the debt problems. Now, I know religion is often divisive in this country. Christian is why they do it, not who they do it for. That's the best way to, to look at that. It's open to anyone who needs that help, regardless of religion. They're motivated out of Christian beliefs. But importantly, if you need emotional help as well as mathematic or administrative help, then try Christians Against Poverty. Those other charities are Citizens Advice, National Deadline and Step Change. Info on all of them will be in the show notes at sspf.co.uk slash podcast. They're very approachable, very well-intentioned people, So please do not fear making contact with them if you feel you need their help. Now this episode is to further explore the options open to the first group, those who can service their debts with their surplus income. Now last time out, I laid out the two approaches to repaying debts, minimising interest paid or paying off the debts in order of size, smallest first. That latter method is known as the snowball method. And I know from my own experience and the experience of those I've worked with, 
that this method fits human behaviour much better than the mathematically pure interest rate approach. Paying off the smallest debt first and then taking each other debt in order of smallest again, you guarantee early victories in repaying the debt. This works on the basis that you can fund your essentials in life, your minimum payments on the debts, and have a little extra to overpay the debt each month. So what do I want to elaborate on in this episode? Well, last time out, I deliberately left out some of the extra activity you can undertake in order to keep the message clear and simple. I also didn't address those of you who might have extremely precarious debt situations, and that latter has now been addressed. So let's look at those extras you could do to lessen your debt load and speed up the repayment process. And by extras, I obviously mean tricks and workarounds that you can take advantage of to make sure that more of your cash goes towards paying off the debt and not just servicing interest costs. First up then, 0% balance transfer cards. Now this is a credit card that allows you to move the debts from another card or even multiple cards onto it. Then there is a period where the debt is charged 0% interest over that time. This can be six months right up to 35 months. The market for these types of credit cards has been competitive over the last decade or so. Cynically, I'd say that's because it's been that long that people have been struggling to pay back the easy debts that they were allowed to run up in the 90s. Now these cards will either allow for a free transfer of your debt or debts from the old cards to the new card, or they will charge a one-off fee to do so. Before we look into that type of deal though, let me say this. If you have debts and you are looking to a 0% balance transfer, it will not solve your problems. It'll lessen the cost of interest, but it will not clear the debt for you. It merely lessens the additional costs of having debt. You may be able to reduce your 20% a year interest rate down to a 3% fee, but it's the 100% of debt that you should be worried about, not the absence of a potential interest charge. The debt is what needs paying off. The 0% balance transfer gives you the breathing room to do that more effectively, and that's all it does. So, here's an example situation. Let's say there's £5,000 of credit card debt, and we'll work an example from there. The current interest rate paid on the old card is 18.9%, a very typical APR. That's £945 in interest alone over the year. If you transfer that balance to a 0% card for six months with no fee payable, you'd effectively save yourself about £500, half of that £945 interest. So your minimum monthly payment of £150, or 3% of the balance, would actually go towards paying off the debt. It wouldn't be split between £80 of extra interest and £70 of actual debt reduction. So the bites you take out of the debt are bigger because your teeth are sharper and they're not being dulled by interest rates. After six months, the debt will be down to £4,100 at a rate of 150 a month. You'd then be back where you started in terms of having to pay interest again though, so you'd be looking to find another 0% balance transfer card. So say you opted for the longer 0% window, but paid a fee of 2.5%. Now there's a card on the market currently that gives 35 months interest free with a one-off fee of 2.5%. So on the original £5,000 example debt, that would be a fee of £125. The total owed would rise to 5125 and a minimum repayment amount would be £153.75 each month, so we'll, let's call it 155 Now, 33 months of £155, and the whole debt would have been paid off. We'd still be inside our 35-month window, and there'd be no need to have to find another card at the end of that. You could just cut that card up and enjoy a debt-free life, or at least a credit card-free life. Sure, it cost £125 to lock in to such a long transfer window, but it's a greater level of certainty than getting new fee-free 0% cards every 6 or 12 months at almost £1,000 of potential interest payable for just the first year of carrying that amount of debt, the fee to be able to carry it for almost three years of 
£125 looks reasonable. Now, back to the real world. There are many options in the 0% balance transfer market. There's a range of dates in between the 6-month and 35-month cards I've mentioned here. There are a range of fees also, from 0 to 3%. There are promotions and reduced fees for existing customers sometimes. This is a very active marketplace, so do your research and find an offer that suits your situation best. If you're heavily overpaying that card as part of your snowball method, then you might not need 35 months. Just six months would be long enough for you, perhaps. So you could sidestep the fees and opt for a fee-free card. Also, you should try to minimise the number of credit applications you make in a short period of time, as they are visible to other lenders. Apply for a card and get rejected, you may enter a cycle of negative credit scoring, where the evidence of being rejected means you will be rejected by another lender because of that rejection. The way to avoid this catch-22 situation is to do a a soft application. This is a pre-application check, and it's done through an independent website. For instance, Money Saving Expert offers this service for free, where they will ask you the same questions as the real lender, and then give you an indication of your possibilities of being successful. So you may be told that 60% of people in your situation were accepted to the card you've chosen. It'll give you an indication that you are in a strong position to apply. After all, 6 out of 10 were successful. If it was only 20% or 2 out of 10, you may opt for another card where your chances are more favourable. The benefit here is that you can do lots of research in this way and it doesn't leave marks on your credit history that are visible to lenders. I'd recommend signing up for a free credit report service like Noddle to get access to what your credit history looks like. Though each of the main credit agencies holds its own version of a credit report on you, Noddle is free and is actually owned by Call Credit, one of the three major credit agencies, the other two being Experian and Equifax. You are allowed access to your credit report for £2 every six months. That is a legal right offered by all of the agencies. However, you'll often have to fight through their websites to get to that, and they'll put pressure on you through advertising to buy monthly packages that protect your credit. Now, I don't know of any way of protecting your credit other than proactivity on your side. Now, Noddle is free, but they make money by offering you deals on credit cards and loans on the site. I use it every couple of months, and I don't click the page for offers, so I don't see them, and therefore, I can't be tempted. But if you were looking for 0% transfer deals you might get offered one through the site. The takeaway message, though, is that you can get free access to your credit file and you don't have to pay. So that's a lot of information there on 0% balance transfer credit cards and the knock-on effect to your credit report of applying for them. Another type of credit card is a money purchase card. This works much the same as a 0% card, but will also allow for you to pay off an overdraft with it. This means the amount of your overdraft is deposited as cash into your account, setting the balance to zero, and then you owe the amount to the credit card instead, with the benefit of a period of 0% interest. The current possibilities in the market carry a slightly higher fee than a regular 0% card, and they don't have as long an interest-free period. But if it gives you certainty each month on your repayments and relieves the pressure of being in the red all the time, then it may be worth trying. A twist on the regular use of this could be used when you buy an item of high value and are seeking an alternative to a low interest deal. For instance, buying a car might be achieved by purchasing it through your bank account and then using this money purchase card to clear that debt and transfer it to the card at 0% interest. However, I don't condone taking on extra debt here at the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast for things which can not only be saved for ahead of time, but are also destined to go down in value. Outside of credit cards, we have the consolidation loan. Now, consolidating debts is not a million miles away from transferring credit cards. The basic idea in both is to take out a new credit arrangement to replace the existing one or many that are in place. The difference with consolidation is that it's highly unlikely you get 0% as a long-term interest rate. 
you may be reducing a loan of, say, 8% over two years to 4% over that same time. Or to reduce the monthly payments to an even more manageable level, you extend the term out, say from two years to three years. Though there is a possibility of saving some interest payments and of fixing your monthly repayment to a more manageable amount, I don't like consolidation loans. I dislike them for the same reason as I mentioned for 0% credit cards. The act of lowering your interest does not fix the underlying problem. The debt itself is the issue. The interest that is charged is merely a distraction. If you get fired up about clearing debts off, then you should be overpaying at a much higher rate than interest accrues. For that reason, lowering the interest rate is a positive step, but it's too easy to think it was a significant step. It wasn't, and the journey ahead will still be a tough one. Moreover, if you consolidate loans to a longer repayment period, I'm even more disliking of them. By lengthening out a loan, you increase the total amount of interest that will be paid, so you're merely guaranteeing that you'll pay more in the long run than you otherwise would have. And then there's the issue of physically overpaying a loan. Unlike a credit card where you can pay above and beyond the minimum at any point, a loan is more structured. Overpaying will often lead to penalty charges, more interest, a fee, early redemption charge, things of that nature. And this seriously stifles any passion for being debt-free that you have. If you cut back on inessentials or earn some extra money from overtime, say, how can you overpay the loan? In short, you can't really. A credit card, however, could receive an extra overpayment and you'd shorten your route to debt freedom accordingly. So consolidation of any personal loans are best avoided if at all possible. It's better owing the same amount to a card than a loan where possible as this access to early repayment possibilities is so much more powerful to you when paying off debt. If you have no discipline for overpaying debt though, the structured nature of a loan can force you to a set path. But we both know that's not why you're listening to this podcast. You're in control of your money and loans take away that control. My last tip for paying off debt and finding tweaks along the way to help you is a behavioral one. Each time you pay off a credit card or a significant chunk of your debt, then reward yourself. Now I'm not saying that paying off a hundred pound of debt should result in a meal at a restaurant, likely undoing an equal amount. I'm thinking something proportional. Pay off a hundred pound on your smallest card, then treat yourself to a cappuccino. Pay off a thousand pound from your five thousand pound debt. Treat yourself to a night out at the cinema and a cheap meal. Fifty pound won't ruin your plan, and you get some much needed relief from all the sacrificing you've been doing. You could set points along the way. Say for every thousand pound of debt you repay, you allocate twenty pound for a treat. The first thousand pound will give you a twenty pound treat. The next thousand pound will give you a forty pound treat. The next a sixty pound treat, and so on. That way. The treats get nicer as the period of sacrifice gets longer and you get deeper into it. It's all perspective and it's completely up to you. But remember that sacrificing for a long period of time with no let up will be hard on you. So little waypoints, little goals with a little reward attached can make all the difference in maintaining your stamina. Paying off debt is an unavoidable consequence to overspending earlier on. You can stumble into debt, spending a little too much here and there of money you didn't yet have on credit cards, signing up to loans and higher purchase arrangements that do not make sense under closer scrutiny, or just dropping into that overdraft a little each month. Debt can come about like a thousand little cuts. Each one isn't enough to kill you, but altogether they can overwhelm. But where you can stumble into debt, you cannot stumble out. You need to own the situation, straighten your back, and push your way out by force. The snowball method is your route, and the tips I've given you today will provide the strength you need to push through. Next time, I really will look at mortgages. How do they work? What do they cost? What types are there? How do I get one? I'll cover the basics of the largest expense you're likely to have in your financial life and the one that can bring you the most reward, a home. In the meantime though, 
Check out my blog at sspf.co.uk slash blog for more financial common sense. Don't forget to spread the word. Financial peace of mind is here to stay. Simple steps and my personal finance coaching are here to help. If you're finding this approach useful or are unsure on how to act, drop me a line. Let's see how personal finance coaching can help you. After all, what could be better than having personal guidance tailored to your circumstances? Book your free consultation at sspf.co.uk slash book B-O-O-K. Thanks for listening. That's it for episode 15. For more information, check out the website for show notes and transcripts for each episode. This podcast is copyright of Simple Steps Personal Finance Limited and can be shared freely. The SSPF podcast is available as direct download on Android, RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Mixcloud, YouTube, Vimeo and more. We're here however you want us. If you like what you're hearing, please leave a review so others know to listen in too. Thanks as always to Partners in Line for the music used throughout this episode. See you next time.